Hello all, uh, my name is Andrew Pierce and I'm the Circulation Services Supervisor here at the Gaston County Public Library. And today I'm filming something for you all that you can access at any time. This is a screencast of our Wildcard 101, 101 training. Um, the Wildcard is brought to you by the Gaston County Public Library. So we're going to go through and tell you exactly what the Wildcard wild does for your students, how you guys can use the resources, what resources you can use, and also a little about about the library as well. Alright, so here we go. So the WOW card is a project that we've been working on for a while now, and it is a partnership that has actually been contracted with the Gaston County Schools and the, the Gaston County Public Library. Um, and so we're really excited to have this training for you guys and hopefully give you a little bit of information that will be useful for you as we go through with this project. And we always want to remind you that um, the Gaston County Public Library, the staff are always here. We actually have some contact information on, on this uh, this presentation, but you can also find all of our contact information on our website as well. Anytime you need anything, just give us a call or email us. This is our information. <clears throat> Laura Morris is our director. Um, the main contact you're going to use is actually Chad Eller. He's our digital services coordinator, and he's the one who's actually whose um, name and email and information is on all of the information that you give out for the WOW card. Um, there's my information, my email. Um, and then I also put in here Jane Kaler and Tanya Jones. For example, when we did this presentation for the school media specialist, um, one of the middle school school media specialists has already contacted our reference supervisor because they have a family history project. And Jane and her staff were able to actually put together a live guide using both physical resources as well as some of the digital resources that they have available with um, the WOW card. And they were able to put it all together so their students could use it for that specific project. So she's a good reference to have. And then Tanya Jones, our Collection Development Supervisor, when we get to NCDL and NC Kids, I'll explain about a particular budget that allows us to order specific things for our digital collection, and she's going to be your contact for that. Um, before we dive in, there had been some, some questioning about the actual website and where they could find things, so I wanted to click around a little bit on the website and show you just a little bit of what you can find. Um, this is actually exactly where you'll find um, to access to all of these links for the digital resources that you'll have available with the WOW card. Um, but first, I just wanted to let everyone know all of our locations and hours. As you can see, our, our main website is a book, and the first one is about the library. So locations and hours. <clears throat> we do have 10 branches throughout the county, three here in Gasonia, the main branch, which is here on Garrison Boulevard, the Ferguson branch, which is at the Irwin Center, and then down here we have the Union Road branch, which is down on Union Road near Forestview High School. We also have a lot of branches spread throughout the county, a lot of which are actually located near schools, um, which is really great. We have one in Belmont, Bessemer City, Cherville, Dallas, Mount Holly, Stanley, and then we also have a really cool thing called a makerspace at our new um, Lowell branch, which is now called Tech at Lowell, um, the Technology Education and Communication Hub at Lowell. And there's a 3D printer and a lot of cool stuff, so that would be useful for your students as well. But this has all the um, information, the contact information. You click on any of these. So if, say, for example, you're in Bessemer City, you're going to get a phone number, a fax number. You're also going to get the branch supervisor of each branch. Um, if your school is located closer to a branch and you'd like that community's branch um, staff members to come to your school to do any training or anything, this is a really great way to find out contact information for those supervisors. All right. And Going back to the main page, this is where the online databases and links, when we start talking about all the different resources that you're offered, right here is where you'll, you'll be able to find all of them. You'll see some of them here, but then if you click and more, you're actually going to get all of them, and they're in alphabetical order. Um, and many of them, some of them you actually don't need a library card. For example, we'll talk for a second about Tumble Books, which is really popular among our elementary school teachers. Um, that one is IP located, so if, as long as you're on our website and you click on it, it's going to recognize that you're with um, our subscription or the school subscription with Tumble Books. So you don't necessarily need your card for all of them, but this is just a list of um, all the different resources that you actually have offered um, that are digital for with your library card. Um, so just a little quick overview of the Wildberry card. Um, do the students actually receive a card? No, this is a virtual card. They will receive a little thing to teach them how to put in their number, which is on this, slot, um, this presentation, so we'll show you that as well. And um, then they will uh, they'll use their student number, and uh, their, excuse me, their lunch number, and that will be able to help them um, determine their, their wild card number. That's on the next slide, so we'll get to that in a second. Can students check out physical items? 
No. Um, however, anyone who lives, works, owns property, or goes to school in Gaston County has access to a free library card. Um, and getting a, having a WOW card through the school does not eliminate you from being able to get a physical library card. So any students who are interested in checking out books and doing everything in-house as well as having the digital resources, they can stop by any of their branches with their parent or guardian and they can get a free library card. <clears throat> Um, and then the big question that we've had a lot of, do teachers or do school staff in general receive WOW cards? No, teachers are eligible for a free library card, like I said. Um, and there wasn't actually a, an ID number that we could really use, like the student lunch number, to actually give you guys WOW cards. Plus, we as the library staff felt that teachers would want to have the library card <clears throat> the physical library card because it gives them access not only to the digital resources that your students will have with the WOW card, but also access to all the things that we have in-house at all of our branches. All right, so this is how they will determine their WOW card number. Um, the WOW card is a 14-digit number because all of our card numbers are 14 digits. So they'll start with WOW, -W, and then however many zeros it takes, and then at the end will be their lunch number. So this little form will be on all of um, the forms that you give out, so you can, the students can be helped by the teachers in figuring out how many zeros they need to get to that number. Um, but we thought this would be the easiest way to actually um, help them remember their number because most of them obviously know their lunch number. All right, so instead of having a permission slip for every single student, to use the WOW card, um, we're actually doing the exact opposite, which is an opt-out form. So this form, this is a screenshot of the form. Um, the only thing, the only forms you will need to collect are from parents who do not want their kids to have access to these resources with the WOW card. If they do not fill out the opt-out form, then we assume that they are giving them permission. Um, once they're filled out and they are sent back to us here at the Gaston County Public Library, Chad Eller, our digital services coordinator, will take that information out for that student. Right now, the current plan um, for the opt-out forms is that teachers, if your parents fill them out and they send them back, that you are to give them to an administrator and all those will be forwarded to the Teacher Resource Center where um, someone from, from our staff will collect them, give them to Chad and get that, that, that information, those particular students' information out of the database. So the WOW card, which by the way stands for Without Walls, I didn't say that earlier, Without walls, the idea is that the library is going to be available to anyone no matter where you are, whether you're at the library, whether you're at home, whether you're at school, anywhere you are, you can have access to the library. And this card gives you access to a variety of digital resources. You can get free ebooks, which also includes free audiobooks, streaming video from NC Kids Digital Library, the NC Digital Library, Freeding, and also homegrown ebooks, which is through NC Live. NC Live is mostly, though, used for research, and uh, we'll do a little demo to show you just the different. Um, the, the vast amount of resources that are available through NC Live. Free magazines from Zinio. That one is starred for right now because we're not going to go dive too much into it today. The uh, Zinio service is actually merging with a different service to become one service, and at the moment it's kind of in flux. Once we get that settled out, once all the, the, the merger has occurred, uh, we will send out an updated training video or an updated training something so that you guys can also use that resource as well. But we do want, want you to note that you can get free mag free online magazines through Zinio and that that feature will eventually be available. And then finally, um, language learning with Rocket Languages, which is a really cool service. <coughs> and no, we have not forgotten Tumble Books. Um, Tumble Books are really popular with the elementary school student uh, teachers and students. They are It's an animated book site that's really, it's a lot of fun, so I'll actually show you real quick how Tumble Books works. This is a feature uh, particularly a lot of our school media specialists in the elementary schools already use. And you guys actually had access to it a lot before. Uh, Tumblebooks decided they could make more money, so you actually have a separate subscription that's a, par it's a partner subscription with the library. So Tumblebooks work the exact same way that it worked before. You go to our website, you click on it, it'll recognize your IP is coming through the Gaston County Public Library, and boom, and you're here. So you have a lot of different things. There's storybooks, there are read-alongs. There's all sorts of things. They have really fun videos. You can watch American Crocodiles, for example, and you just play the video. They have animated books, which help students with uh, early literacy skills that are important. And at first I thought, oh, that, you know, this won't be useful to, say, middle school or elementary school, or, excuse me, middle school or high school students. But when we were doing some training earlier this summer, I actually had a high school Spanish teacher said, that she was going to use this because there are there are books in Spanish here on Tumble Books, 
that her students, even though in high school, they're reading at this level when it comes to um, Spanish. So this is a great way for them to learn as well. So this is something that's actually useful for all ages, but mostly used by our elementary school students. All right. So, all right, so now we have tumble books down. The most popular resource, the one that most likely is going to be used the most is the North Carolina Digital Library that also has a new offshoot called the NC Kids Digital. We're really excited about this project. This is something that has come from the State Library and the North Carolina Public Library Directors Association. NC Kids is the first state-sponsored digital library specifically for children um, anywhere in the country. We are actually really breaking ground here in North Carolina. Our state library is by doing this specifically for kids. It's technically geared towards children's birth through grade four. When we were doing this training, we realized that, for example, the middle school battle of the books um, lists were, were on there. So actually it looks like it's extending beyond grade four into, into the middle grades. And really cool, um, LSTA grants, we get LSTA grants through the um, IMLS, the Institute for Museum and Library Services, which is a federal um, department and they send money to all the state libraries and there was a LSTA grant they granted a hundred thousand dollars specifically to NC kids this year which means that there has been a just an influx of tons of new stuff on the NC kids digital library so the amount of material that is there for these kids has just exploded in the last couple months and um, they'll be able to access this actually two ways through the Libby application which we'll, we'll discuss and, and do a showcase of that or you can also do it on your browser Right now, we do not know when the Libby application is going to be put on all of the devices for um, Gaston County Schools. Your IT department is working on that. But until the application is actually put on them, you can still read these books. You can still access this resource just through your browser. So just um, some important facts about NC, both for the NCDL and for NC Kids. There are five checkouts of ebooks or e-audiobooks allowed per card, and six holds are allowed. <clears throat> Many titles are sim simultaneous use. This is really great for classroom learning because of their simultaneous use. Then every student in the classroom on their one-to-one -one device can access the same book at the same time. These are called never-ending reading, and there's a section for that on NC Kids, which I will show you for you guys. And then um, if they do want to place a hold on either the NCDL or the NC Kids if the item's not available, it does require an email address. We know that the middle school and the high school students do have free email addresses through the county school system. We know that the elementary school students do not. However, with NC Kids, this is not a big concern. They have really worked hard to make sure that these kids are not having to put things on hold, are not having to wait, and that many of them are simultaneous use. For your older students, though, that will be important through the NCDL, but luckily they do have a, a, an email provided for them. So why Libby? Um, if any of you are familiar with our digital library, you know that for a long time we've used the OverDrive app. This is something you can go, it's free, both Libby and OverDrive. You can go to your app store and download them for free. Um, OverDrive has decided to create a new application. Both applications are working at the same time. They're still supporting both of them. Libby is the one that the um, Gaston County Schools IT staff chose to use. And there are several reasons, and they're really good reasons, and it's why even here at the library for all of our patrons, we're going to start pushing towards using Libby instead of OverDrive. First of all, it's a newer application. It's much more updated, which is really nice. The OverDrive app's kind of clunky. It's a lot easier to use and set up. That was one of the big things is that once into people got used to OverDrive, they really loved it, but we spent a lot of time having to train people, our patrons and our staff, to learn how to download it on all these different devices because it just wasn't easy to, to set up. And then particularly for you guys at the schools, the reason we're using Libby or the reason your IT staff has chosen to use Libby is because it is designed particularly for children, um, particularly for elementary school teachers to utilize with this, this new NC Kids database. But you guys are allowed to use it too as an adult. You'll have the same access. I, I think though that, that um, the school made the right choice with Libby. It really is a lot easier to set up and it's going to be a lot more intuitive for, for your students. So um, I, I wanted to do some screenshots of the application. This is just my iPhone that I did one night just to show you how to do it. I'm also going to show you how you can do it on your browser. So you'll start when you open up Libby, you download it for you guys on your devices. Once IT downloads the application, it'll be available for you on all your devices. It'll look for the local library. Um, this one had, locate, of course, I had my location services on, so it just automatically find, found it. Otherwise, you can also do find my library, 
and you can put in your zip code or your town and you'll be able to find it. <clears throat> and it automatically popped up Gaston County Public Library and the North Carolina Digital Library that all of this is through. So you say yes. And then all you have to do is select a library from the list. And by the way, this is the, what you do to actually set it up. Once this is set up, you don't have to continue to re-enter this information. So you look for us here at the Gaston County Public Library. They're in alphabetical order. Um, the NCDL is a consortium, which is really great. It means that we are getting, pulling resources and funds from different middle to smaller library systems across the state of North Carolina. And so you'll see all the different counties that are involved with the NCDL. But you pick Gaston County Public Library, and then it'll say card number. And this is where the, the students will enter their WOW card number. As you can see, we kind of went ahead and put it as WOW. Or for you as teachers or staff, that's when you're put, you, you will put in your 2505 number that you have. And then you're in. You're here. You're in the North Carolina Digital Library. You can start downloading items. And this is one of those two. On the Overdrive app, there were separate. There was the Overdrive app versus the NCDL. They really weren't connected. Libby has eliminated a lot of that. <clears throat> you literally go to something that says it's available. I just the first one I saw was Girl on the Train. It was available. It said you put in your library card. Do you want to borrow? Yes. And then it immediately pops up and says, Do you want to see it in your loans? And there you are. And right here. And we had also downloaded the Martian too. And right here it says open book. You hit open book, and there we go. And that's the first page of Girl on the Train. So it's a really simple process of setting up, and it's kind of intuitive in a way that the old Overdrive app was not. So you would literally hit that, and then borrow, and then there you go, and it's available. So that's a really nice process. Um, the North Carolina Digital Library is the is the granddaddy kind of of this of this. This is the one that's been around for a while. The NC Kids is actually just a few years, actually less than a year old. Um, it also uses the Libby app, and um, it, it just depends on whether you access the kids or the digital library. Um, they have the read-in browser, which we'll, I'll show you in a, in a minute. But what I wanted to point out right here, and this is why I put Tanya Jones, our collection development supervisor's information, is that with the consortium, we have a certain amount of money that we contribute to the consortium as a whole. And then we have an Advantage account. And the Advantage account is, is specifically for our patrons, our cardholders. We order items that are only available to download for our cardholders. Card so this is really good. This is why I want you guys to know Tanya's information. If there's a book that you need as a classroom, something that you wanted to use specifically for a project, we can use our Advantage account. And that way, only cardholders here in Gaston County will, will um, be able to use it. So that makes it so that you don't have all these holds. So I just wanted you guys to know that you can definitely call Tanya if there's something that you really need. We can see if we can get it specifically for our card, card holder, specifically for the WOW card. All right, so that's NC Live. But what I wanted to do before that is go back to the Gaston Library main page and show you how to use the browser portion of this. So you go to Online Databases and Links. It's actually up here, the NCDL, but I wanted to go to Ann Moore just to once again show you how everything is. I'm going to do this with using the kids' digital library just to kind of show you that because I think that one's going to be the most um, heavily used. So first of all, you'll see here at the top where it explains how we got this information. Um, next time you're talking to your congressman, remember that the IMLS um, does a lot of really great things, and right now it's providing this digital resource for you. So you would sign in. This is just I'm going to use my personal library information here because it's the one I know, and you select your library. So you can go down. You can see there are a lot of different libraries that contribute to this, which is why there's so many items here. And then you sign in. That's my library card number. You, please don't use it. I'm kidding. All right, so you can see what you borrowed, or you can go right here. And this is where you all of a sudden, any, anything you need. So there's, they put up haunted reads. Um, it, it's got a lot of cool things. They try to do specialty things so you can kind of see stuff. That's, of course, for Halloween coming up. Here's the fifth grade battle of the books. That's great if you guys are looking for other copies of it. We order a bunch here for the library. I know you guys order them for your school libraries. But if battle of the books is popular that year, sometimes it's hard to get copies. Now you have these digital copies here. Um, new, new items, that's always great to know. They have Halloween, of course, and the North Carolina Children's Book Award, so there are a lot, a lot of our award-winning ones. This here is the never-ending reading. These are the ones where you have simultaneous use. So these, this is where if you all want to read this on the road with Mallory, your whole class wants to read it, it's simultaneous use. As many people as who, who want to can download it at the same time, you all can read it together. So that's where that never-ending re never reading is. So I'm just going to pick one. This one looks fun. I'll, I'll haunt you. 
and you go to it and it says it's available and you borrow it. Um, and it, it checks out for 14 days. There's also a way, that little arrow that was there, you can actually go and change it to 21 days. So then in order to read it, you just go to your loans and you'll see it there. This is where um, if you're on your app, you'll actually download the file. But since we're here in our browser, we just put read in browser. And once it loads, my internet's being slow today, sorry. And there you go. And you're actually here. And you can start scrolling. Well, maybe. There it goes. And as you're scrolling, you're reading the book. And it's right there. And even when you click out, it doesn't go away. It's still there. You can all get back to that same title. And right here, you can also see we said there were five titles. It'll tell you that you have four more. And that's really simple. So even though you don't have the app or, or until you guys get the application downloaded on, your, on all your devices, you can do it right in your browser with any of these items, which is really great. Anytime you need to, you can go back to here. Also, I wanted to show you guys a really cool feature. If you go to Search and Advanced, um, if you're interested in certain Lexile scores, uh, certain interest levels, the, the audiences in terms of age, the availability, there's all sorts of stuff you can um, you can do specific search, searches with. I know we have a lot of teachers um, send their students in for certain Lexile scores, so that way you can also gear, steer your kids towards the right ones that, that fit their reading level, which is really great. All right, so we're going to go back to the slide here. Our next resource is NC Live. NC Live is, once again, it's, it's consortium-based. There's all sorts of different libraries across the state of North Carolina, academic as well as public. They're all contributing to this as a resource. Um, there are a lot of great things on here. I'm not going to be able to show you everything that NC Live does because there are so many databases and so many different things. But I wanted to go ahead and just give you a quick tutorial of a lot of the stuff, or some of the stuff that it authors, offers. Excuse me. Um, recent updates to the site. This has been really great. They actually have tried to make it the interface or the front page kind of Google S. There's a plain search bar you can search and it pulls up all the resources. This is really great for students who are starting their um, starting to learn about research or doing research for projects. You guys are always hammering into them that you don't want to uh, use Wikipedia or you want to make sure that your sources are quality. The great thing about NC Live is that all these sources are, are going to be the kind of sources that you need for research papers. So we're going to go back to the library website and back to online databases and links. Once again, this is the front page. And then NC Live happens to be on the front page, but once again, I wanted to show where you can go, and it's in order under here under NC Live. And this one too, once you click on an item, they will ask you for your library card number, in this case, your WOW card number. Um, and is is when you go through the portal, uh, the the through the main page, it's going to automatically connect you here with the Gaston County Public Library. But as as you can see, there's all sorts of stuff they can browse, which is really great, and they have featured articles and all sorts of interesting things. But right here is that main search bar, just like you were would on any major um, search engine like Google. So let's just say, for example, you want to search for North Carolina. Just start there. There's all sorts of stuff. Here's a link to the State Library, to our Periodicals Index, ebooks about North Carolina scholarly articles, uh, magazine articles that have come out, there's videos, there's different databases. I love to actually show people the different databases that we offer just starting at A and you can scroll through everything from art to history to poetry to literature. Um, we have test prep items, Morningstar which is great for investments, McGraw-Hill, a lot of your textbooks are McGraw-Hill. Uh, Gale is a great literary resource right here. Heritage Quest is awesome. That is one that we've we sent with that middle school school media specialist who's doing family um, family history projects. Heritage Quest is a genealogy database. They have health resources, finance resources. Starting in January, we actually have back consumer reports. That was something that we had for a while, and then we no longer had it. So starting in January, we'll have that back again, which is really awesome for your finance classes, your investment clubs, those types of things. So I just wanted to show you that as well. But let's go back to the North Carolina search here and go to anything really or North Carolina Gazetteer or North Carolina uh, 
databases for veterinary economics. The 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 list the the lists of subjects that are available here are incredible. So let's actually go to just pick one in particular. How about this one? North Carolina aids young professionals. Your students are very soon going to be young professionals, so this might be a, a useful article. And really, NC Live is a portal. It allows you to get to all these different databases. I think that that's really important. And then you're right here, you have the full text of the PDF. You can download the PDF. It's available, and it's right there. This is the article. Also available through NC Live is the Homegrown eBooks, which is just a really cool collection. So actually, you can, you can find it on NC Live as well. You can go back to NC Live and do eBooks. And this is the Homegrown eBooks collection. There's also a separate link to it on our website. And these are either North Carolina authors or subjects that involve North Carolina, so that's why it's called Homegrown. So for those of you who are doing North Carolina history, North Carolina social sciences, anything like that, this is a great place to find eBooks that are specifically geared towards North Carolina. So I wanted to show you that as well. All right, so the next resource is the Zinio. And this is the one where I said I'm not going to do a lot about, and I apologize for this in the beginning. Um, so right now Zinio is merging with another resource called One Click Digital, which used to be um, downloadable audiobooks, e-audiobooks. And Zinio provides online magazines. So this is a really cool resource. It's going to be free with the wildcard. Right now, though, they're in the process of becoming one entity called RB Digital. And until they're complete on their end, this isn't something the library can control. We're, we don't want to dive too much into it because if we show you Zinio and then in six weeks it's not going to be Zinio anymore. So once we once everything's merged and we as the staff kind of get our head straight on exactly what RB Digital does, we're going to try to make sure we send out some information for you. And then the last one I want to discuss is Rocket Languages. Uh, this is a big one for the language classes and just for anyone who's interested in learning a new language. Once again, uh, you're you're going to require an email address like you would for putting holds on NCDL. But this is really geared towards the older students, so these are going to be the ones that have those, those emails available to them. So once you set up an account, you just have to, to set up an account. So once again, we're going to go back to GastonLibrary.org. Excuse me, online databases and links, and more. And I keep clicking back to the same page because I want you guys to get used to that this is where this information is. This is the RB Digital. Once it's all um, together, it'll be there. So here we go to Rocket Languages. So if you've never had an account before, you do have to create an account. So we're going to do that. Excuse me, I've already done that. And so if you're just a returning user, it would just be your email. Oops. I think that's my password. Awesome. So once you're in there, you'll see that the front page is really, it's very simple to find. No, I don't need to remember my password, Google. So we have a lot of different uh, languages. The ones that you're probably going to be most interested in are the Spanish and the French, because those are the ones that are taught kind of in mass across Gaston County. There's also Rocket English. This is for ESL students trying to learn Spanish. I'm actually going to get out of that because I don't know enough Spanish to know what it's saying. So I'm going to go down here to Rocket Spanish. And go the other way. And once you click on it, you have all sorts of lessons. Some of them are audio based, um, how to pronounce things. They're just all these different things that you can do. And it's a great way to self pace learning new skills, I mean, learning new languages. And um, there's also going to be one on NC Live. Right now, it's a different source, but in January, it's going to be called Mango. And it's going to be just like Rocket Language, another um, a source to help people with learning new languages. All right, so the final slide I have here today is just there are links. Once this thing is posted, um, there are links that are going to help you find um, help and FAQs on all these sites. So this is something you can click on. Um, if you're having any issues, you can always consult back to this. You can always go back to those contact um, the emails that we provided at the beginning. 
Um, but this is also if you're clicking around and you think every single one of these, you're, you're trying to figure it out, every single one of these sites offer help links or FAQs. So this, this is more information for you guys that give you some more specifics if you need it. We'd like to thank Gaston County Schools for this wonderful, wonderful partnership. It, it is beneficial for us as well as for you. And we think that the WOW card really is a great way for the schools and the libraries to work together and share resources. And we want to encourage any teacher, any principal, any staff member who has any questions to contact us. We've done a lot of individual trainings. We've trained with a lot of school media specialists, so that a lot of them are going to be your go-tos in your schools. And we want you to feel free to ask any questions that you need because we think that this is something that's really going to be very popular and have a lot of resources available. But we also want it to be successful. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know. And I thank you for listening today.